Next message. Yeah, your show on the coverage of the flood was in very poor taste. And about 40 other viewers that I knew feel the same way. Your show should be canceled. I mean, that's, it's not funny to go around making fun of people that are lost their homes and their belongings and everything they got. And a lot of other people I know feel the same way. So get your act together. It's not funny making fun of flood victims. A typical politically correct idiot. Never at any time on any of our shows dealing with the flood did we ever make fun of a flood victim. We made fun of a lot of other things. We made fun of the flood. But after all, the flood isn't sacred. The flood is evil. And we have a very good right and reason to make fun of it. But I repeat, never at any time, you can watch any of the shows, do we ever, ever make fun of flood victims. And like a typical politically correct idiot, this guy wants us canceled, not because he doesn't want to see it, but because he doesn't want other people to see it. A real dimwit. Anyway... Well, the flood is really crazy. It's now frightening. This is August 1st when we're starting to tape this. And some of the footage that we taped has changed radically over the last week. But I think maybe, maybe I should be politically correct this time and do a serious show about the flood. After all, you people there have enough misery so why not give you more misery, just like all the other TV stations? Because after all, to be politically correct, you have to be unhappy. And the worst thing they hate about other people is when they're happy. And to be happy during a terrible time when everybody is going through a lot will be the best way maybe, to deal with it. Because after all, being sad about it isn't going to make the water go away. And it isn't going to make idiots like you go away. So we're going to be serious tonight. I promise. Totally serious. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. God's going to ride on the rain and tide. Well, it's oh, no. Stop, children, listen to me. Brother Don walked down from the ground to see what he was given his people. His command claimed that he would destroy the land. Well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We, we, we were playing the wrong tape there by accident. We're going to start the show again now, and we're going to be serious, okay? So here we go with uh, Worldwide Magazine. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, it's oh, oh no, uh, up, mm, oh no, uh, high, oh no, uh, God's gonna ride on the rain and tide. Well, ride on the rain and well, my Lord, ride on the rain and tide. Well, ride on the rain and oh well, my Lord, ride on the rain and tide. Well, stop. Children, listen to me. Brother God no, walked down from the ground no, to see what he was no, given his people. Brother his command claimed no, that he would brother destroy no, the land. Brother Spoke brother to Noah, brother Noah, brother Noah stop. He said, Listen here, Noah, build me an ark. I want you to build it big and strong. Build it 300 cubits long, 60 high, 30 wide. I want to stand on the raining tide. He said, Oh, oh Noah, up, up. Mm, oh Noah. He said he would ride on the rain and tide. Well, after God told him what to do, no begin to cut at you. The ring of the hammer was judgment. The ground of the salt was said to repent. Not the most ring of the hammers and saws raised from the ark by the grace of God. After the big foundation was laid, the plank, the timber, and the ark was made. All the animals took back to the ark.
fox, the camel, and the kangaroo God shook the mountains, shook the sea And cried, time will be no more for thee He said, oh, oh, Noah, huh, huh, hmm. Oh, Noah, hmm. hi Oh, Noah, God's gonna ride on the raining tide God's gonna ride on the raining tide God's gonna ride on the raining tide Well, hello again. Welcome to another edition of Worldwide Magazine. And if you're keeping track, this is 120. That's the, that's the episode. This is the 120th episode of Worldwide Magazine. Anyway, uh, this is our third show about the Great Flood of 93. And we're here today at Lee May by, what's the name of that 5 and 10 set store? Pazlowski's. Yeah, Pasolowski's 5 and 10, and there's quite a bit of water here. We had to do a lot of fancy talking to get here, and uh, we're here. And I was really impressed the way you breezed us right past all those National Guardsmen, Pete. It really turned me on. That's very good. Well, that's all you got to say, Kathy? <laughs> well, Pete, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm starting to run out of things to say about this flood. This is the, th the third flood show that I've been on, and... I mean, I know I'm probably not as tired of it as, as the people that live over here are, but I'm starting to run out of things to say. Well, the reason we're doing so many shows about the flood is because this is a momentous event, and this is what everybody's thinking and talking about in St. Louis, and we've been able to, I feel, uh, offer some different viewpoints about the flood, and we hopefully will do the same thing again today. Now, one of the things I heard on the radio, which was frightening, and they said that... Uh, some of the flooded area might be flooded for as long as a year. And I thought that was astounding. You know, Pete, I, uh, I, I believe that because uh, there's still a lot more rain to come. The water around here is, is up to the roofs on, on these houses. And the houses that aren't covered to the roof have this big brown muck line sludge line around them where the water's been sitting. So I don't know, maybe the longer the water sits here, It'll give these people more time before they have to deal with, with what their houses are going to look like by the time it's over, because I think that's probably going to be the really horrible part. And when we're taping this, it's uh, July 24th, 1993, and the water is still rising. There's going to be another crest uh, about a week from now. It's going to get even higher. In fact, the Missouri, I mean, the Mississippi River is going to crest in a week at 48 feet, which is pretty astounding, pretty amazing. Well, I heard the... Uh Missouri River had a new crest today, although I'm not sure what the, the footage was on it. New crest today for the Missouri, so. But it's still going up. It's still raining. It rains a lot. And, uh, well, it's that pretty astounding. Today. That was different. Well, it's it was a different day. Well, every day it, it rains, rain. though. Okay. Listen, we have decided to bring in some of our top talent to give you a very interesting perspective on the flood. So now we're going to switch you. Hey, well, by the way, by the way, by the way, by the way, listen. Could you smell that crap? It I smells so bad. Is that the water? I thought it was Vince. Speaking of Vince, and now we switch you now live, as live as he could be anyway, to Vince. Well, thanks, uh, Pete and Kathy. I, uh, you know, I can't get over the flood. It's. Uh, I used to come down here a lot when I was a kid, and. Uh, you know, to my right over here is Heine Miney Field, it's underwater. And to my left over here is Lee May Fer Ferry Bank and Trust. And I remember when I was uh, working at a, the very first Clark station I worked was down the street, from just a little so uh, north of me up here. And I remember when I used to always go down to this bank all the time. It's amazing that it's underwater. And then when I was a kid, I can remember driving up, going up military with my bike. And it's just devastating. You know, the people around this area are really. Uh, they're having a hard time. And actually, this is kind of like uh, a hard night for me to talk about this flood because even, you know, a lot of things have happened on this date. Uh, this is July 24th, and this is, happens to be my 44th birthday. And uh, it seems like everything happens on my birthday. I remember in 1969, uh, the men landed on the moon, and they came home on my birthday, July 24th. And now I can remember the flood of 93, on my birthday as well. So uh, that's two momentous things that happened on my birthday, both good and bad. I mean, there's good and bad in life, and what can I say? But anyway, I'm really uh, amazed 
at all the support all the people who are getting down here because it seems like I just I just got done talking to a few of the, the guards and the policemen around here and they seem to be uh, having everything under control. Uh, the families around here are all helping each other out with the sandbagging. I guess you see behind me here, it's uh, an awesome sight, you know. I mean, if you go down south of Lee May Ferry down here, there's a bridge about a mile from here, past the River De Paired Bridge down here. It's, uh, it's underwater, too. I mean, it's, uh, it was amazing. And not too long ago, we just uh, drove by uh, Woolmore Park up here by River De Paired on Jameson. It was underwater. So it's a pretty bad situation. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, when we were taping this, the camera battery went dead. It took us about 10 minutes to change it. But don't worry, Vince was still talking when we turned the camera back on. These houses, I mean, what's going to become of all these houses down here? I mean, is it going to be uh, a new river? I mean, is the Mississippi going to be a new river? Uh, what are they going to do? You know, it's going to be kind of hard to tell right now if a flood like this happens again. And, and really, it's amazing because we really didn't have that much water. It seemed like we had a lot of rain, but I didn't think this rain was going to cause this much damage. You know, uh, we've had, we've had uh, a lot of rain before, but nothing like this. And uh, like I say, I'm really uh, sorry to see all these people out of their homes. And if there's anything we can do while we're down here, we'll try to help them out. And, uh, of course, Worldwide Magazine, I'll tell you what, all the regulars of Worldwide Magazine would like to, you know, donate a lot of money, you know, to a lot of these other big businesses and a lot of these TV stations. That's it. Now, wait a minute. That's enough. Now, wait a Get minute. out of the now, way. I'm really sorry to everybody out there who's been sitting through this big, long speech that we have allowed Vince to ramble on for this long with nothing of interest to say. The people down here, Vince, are sad enough without having you standing here going on and on and on and on about nothing. I apologize. Vince is now gone, and he won't bother you again. Recently, our British correspondent, Sir Lord Robert, went to East Carondelet, Illinois, and interviewed some of the people there. And now, on Worldwide Magazine, we're going to switch to East Carondelet and see what's happening there. Okay, this is uh, Sir Lord Rob for the BBC at East Carondelet, and as you can see, it's very, very wet and very unfortunate for the people out here. And uh, all this wetness is definitely a major thing for these people. Right now, I'm going to speak to this young lady. Excuse me, man, I can ask you a couple of questions, please. First of all, I'm getting soaked in mud here and, of course, water. But what I'd like to ask you from the top of my head is, um, is this your business we're looking at? My sister-in-law's. My sister-in-law's. Sister-in-law's. This is really terrible that this is happening to you people out here. I mean, how are you coping with it? Not very well. Best we can. I noticed you've got a couple of machine f objects running there. Are those the pumps? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. Are they working quite well? As long as we're keeping them with gas, they are. <laughs> I heard uh, a rumor that this town's getting evacuated, and in a couple of days, it's going to be very, very uh, hostile with water. Well, what they're saying is at 48 feet, if it crests at that, that they're... 48 you know, feet? Yeah, they're wanting to evacuate the town. God, and of course, by the sounds of the sky, I can hear there's more thunder coming in, which means more rain, obviously. And you can tell by that, it's, it, it obviously means we're going to have a lot more water. Yep, a lot more. <laughs> now, I'm very curious, but how is uh, this dog coping with all this water? Is he learning how to swim? Did you yeah. teach him how to swim? Yeah. In case things really get bad? He does know how to swim, yeah. Well. There's not much else to do out here, then, is it? But to t you know, to teach dogs swim because it's like your house is flooding, and it's like you're putting sandbags up, where we can see right here, and everything's just a complete disaster zone. Yeah, it is. Yes. Is this uh, are your boyfriend or your brother? My Excuse me, sir. Can I ask you a quick couple of questions? Mm. All right. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, you know, it's like you can tell what I'm going to ask you is that this is pretty, uh, absolutely, well, yeah, if you want to look at the uh, bright side of it, I guess. <laughs> but basically, though, uh, how are you coping as a man with all this? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm staying, no matter what. 
Absolutely. We got the kids away, and that's all I'm worried about. I just want to leave my stuff at my house. You sound almost like the captain of a doomed ship. They're just, they're kind of snapping the conclusions, I think, you know, but mm -hmm. then again, that's my opinion. I wouldn't risk anybody else's life on it, but the, I'm going to stay with my stuff, you know, because I don't think it's going to go that far. The only reason why I say a doomed ship is because according to, like, the Coast Guard and the people working back there building right. some eggs, they say that, what, within 48 hours, this place is going to be, like, completely amassed with water. This is Sir Lord Rob for the BBC. And uh, here we're going to interview some people who are watching the flood, no doubt. Actually, you can't really miss the flood. No, you didn't go anywhere. Excuse me. A couple of questions asking people, if you don't mind. Everybody's just disappearing as I get closer. Look at this. Okay, <gasps> okay first of all, um, are you from this area? Yeah, I live right on the other side of Love you over there. <laughs> Is your house being affected by all of this? No? No, it ain't. Because nah. you must have pretty big... Uh, you probably want a mountain, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to chase these girls down. I'm going to chase these, I'm very used to chasing women down. Excuse me, girls, i got a question to ask you. Come back, Well, what does the army think about all this? I bet they're really disgusted before I die of typhoid soon. But before I do, I'm gonna have, I'm, i got to find out. Um, is this water suspected to rise real quick in the next 48 hours? Yeah, it is. Got a quick couple of questions to ask you on the uh, flood. Um, what do you think about all this? Very good answer. Okay. Now, would you say to yourself that this flood's getting out of control? Getting out of control? Yeah, I definitely say it's out of control. But there's nothing that you can do about it. I mean, it's in the hands of God and God alone. He's the one that controls everything. Do you think it's done when people? I mean, are you from around this neighborhood? But don't you think it's done when people buy, uh, buy a house close to the river? I mean, it's been flooding for like thousands and thousands of years and, you know, isn't it obvious that it would happen again? You just take those chances. I mean, this is where people live and grow up and uh, this is their house, this is their home and this is where they make, make it for the rest of their life. Just because it floods once doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen again. Well, uh, according to the statistics, didn't it flood like in 73? Which is, shall we say, about 20 years ago? I have no idea. I was probably around four years old, I don't know. Yeah, well, it flooded in 1973, and it's like every 20 years. That's pretty often, because it takes that, for people who, who live out here, it takes that a lifetime to save for what they got. Probably. I mean, it's, it's a shame, you know, that it's happening, but there's nothing, like he said, there's nothing you could do about it. You've got to put it in God's hands and... Yeah. Are you guys, did you watch, are you guys been flushing your toilet? Of course. Don't you realize that every time you flush your toilet, it's going into the water, which is contaminating the world? It will someday. What are you supposed to do with it? Well, uh, you can dig a hole in the backyard. Yeah, what do you think about that? I don't think I'd dig I, a hole. I don't think I'd dig a hole now. Do you really think to yourself that this is God's revenge for legalizing gambling on the riverfront water? Absolutely not. How long have you been a, uh, well, you know in, what you are? In the Illinois National Guard? I've been in uh, working on 17 years. Okay, now, question is, what do you do on the spare time? I work in uh, an underground coal mine. You do? That's incredible. Uh, that's in uh, Glacier, Illinois. Mm. I work uh, two days a month in the National Guard until we get activated. And then so would you consider this pretty activated right now, what's going on here? You mean yeah, the, the flood? flood? Yeah. Well, nobody knows what it's going to do. Actually, we're just waiting to see what it crests at. these organizations against foolish behavior. You've heard of mad and you've heard of sad. Well, all of us at Worldwide Magazine, on the pulse of the community as usual, have started our own organization. Dad. 
drug addicts against drunk driving. Now, we know you're out there, and you know you're out there, and this is a really important issue, so show your support. Send for one of these bumper stickers. All you have to do is send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to Worldwide Magazine, P.O. Box 39333, St. Louis, Missouri, 63139. And we'll send you this official dad bumper sticker. And with it, we'll send you an assortment of Worldwide Magazine bumper stickers so you can show your support, not only for this worthwhile organization, but for the Worldwide Magazine fan that we know that you are. Thanks for watching. Well, it's raining again. Could you believe it? I don't know if the camera's picking it up. We're at Gravoy in the River de Pere, and uh, the River de Pere is awful high. There's talk of closing the bridge over the river. Anyway, I know a lot of you people out there are kind of down about the flood and kind of upset about it and need to have something to bring your spirits up. So now we're going to bring to you Vanessa and her manager, her new manager, Vince, and they're going to play a song, or sing a song, to help cheer your spirits up. Vanessa, Vince? Okay. Come on, Vanessa. I want to show you this umbrella here. All our other umbrellas were broke, so we had to use this one. Okay, now, Vanessa, you're going to sing your new song. Are we on? Yeah, we're, we're on right now, Vanessa. So we got a real short time to do this, because it might be pouring any minute. So why don't you go ahead and sing your song? Okay, here, I'll hold the umbrella. You get your tambourine on. Okay, go ahead. I'll hold the umbrella. I'll hold it. This one. Okay, ready? Oh, hey, we're ready. Anytime you are, let's go. Okay. When the levee breaks, when the levee breaks, there will be a lot of water. Oh, when the levee breaks, when the levee breaks, what will be there after? Oh, please don't let the levee break, don't let the levee break. We all need our little places to live. Don't let the levee break, don't let the levee break. Because there will be a lot of water. Oh, that was very good, Vanessa. You know, Vanessa, this has really been a bad day. Everything's happening. Shut up, Vince. Why don't you sing another chorus of that? That's pretty good. Do another chorus of that, would you? Okay. you, you Vince, your job is to hold the umbrella as ben Vanessa's manager. Here, hold it down more. You hold it down. You're getting a little wet. You're getting a hair. Her trademark hairstyle is getting damp. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Pete. Okay, Vanessa, you, you heard what Pete said. Let's sing, sing another chorus now. Ready? Okay. Sing out loud now so everybody can hear you. Play your tambourine, too. Okay. Okay, here we go. Ready? Okay. Oh, when the levee breaks, oh, when the levee breaks, oh, there will be a lot of water. When the levee breaks, oh, when the levee breaks, there's an old truck. What will be there after? Oh, when the levee breaks, oh, please don't let the levee break. We made our little homes. Oh, please don't let the levee break. Don't let the levee break. And it's raining out here. Let's go in. <laughs> come on. I want to go in. Oh, come, come on, on, Vanessa. You did a fine job. Keep it up. Do another course. Let's go. Or do it Wait. fast. No, I don't know. Oh, that's all right. The rain ain't going to hurt. The rain is nature. Let's go. Um, Peter, I'm finished. Okay. I'm wet. Oh, that's it.
Hi, what's your name? Betty. Okay, Betty, what do you do? T now? Yeah, what kind of work you do? Well, I work for a local bank. Okay, I see you had some cans here. Uh, don't worry about Anheuser Busch for drinking water. Yes, that's right. Okay, are you, are you in charge of that? Uh, just for now I am. How are you doing, sir? My name is Vince, Worldwide Magazine. How long have you been doing it? I don't know, a couple hours, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you guys are doing a fine job down here. Uh, I mean, have you done it one day or two days? or? Oh, no, this is my first day. First day. We're, we're doing a job. What kind of work do you do? I work at a dairy. Wait, wait, wait. I got 20 before everything's going to go through the mayor's office. Okay, we'll, try, we'll take care of that. We'll take care of that. No, listen, seriously. now listen, listen. If you're not willingly talking to me, I'm forcing myself no, upon no. you. Like I said, everything's got to go through the mayor's office. Okay, we're not, we're not, okay. okay. Any, any, you got good air conditioning in this truck, oh, huh? Got marvelous air conditioning, but like I said, everything. Where are you going? I'm heading up the way here to check on some things. What are you checking on? Uh, see how they're doing our Tylenol and Band-Aid supplies. Well, there's my good friend in the EMS, the head of the EMS, one of the heads of the EMS, Gary Ludwig, and he can't talk to me because the mayor told him not to. No, but you need to clarify that. You need... That's not the issue. The issue is all press information has to be circulated and released through the mayor's office so that there's a coordinator. Okay, I agree with that. Okay, we have to control the flow of information as best not, we can. Not a control as much as we're making sure the right information is getting out. Right, we want people to know the right information. Okay, I understand that. Okay, well, Gary, Gary I, I, will say, that real good. I will say one thing. Gary didn't want to talk to me, and I just kind of forced myself on him, and he's now a willing participant in this interview. So you can go ahead, Gary. You Take care. care. Gary Ludwig. Gary Ludwig, one of the big guys, one of the main guys of the EMS. Thank you, Gary. Carry on. You have an important work to do, to do and I'm sure you're going to do it. Are you not here sandbagging? No, I'm supervising the sandbaggers. Supervising the sandbagging after. Right. Very good. Okay, carry on, Gary. Thank Take you. Care, We're not wanting to be interviewed. You're staying around a long time, huh? Okay, we're down here at the River de Pere, and what's your name, sir? Brad Boggs. And what do you do, Brad? I'm a laborer for Local 53. Oh, really? So one of the union, lo local unions here. And what's Local 53 do? Uh, International Labor Local 53. We, uh, they have uh, laborers, you know, um, what do you mean, what do they do? Um, I mean, what kind of labor work? Any, just any labor work? Yes. Okay. And uh, how long have you been down here helping? Uh, since 10, 10 o'clock yesterday okay. night. And have you been doing it a lot, or is this your first time doing it? This is my first time this year of doing it. Well, we've been talking to these sandbaggers, but there's something that you should know. I'm going to pick up one of these sandbags now, and I'll tell you something. This is heavy. One bag is heavy, but there's thousands, there's tens of thousands of bags here. And you wonder... How many sandbags there are all together, counting all the flood areas? There's probably millions of sandbags. And then you wonder, after the flood is finally over, if it ever happens, if it ever gets over, what are they going to do with all the sandbags? I mean, it's a tremendous amount of sandbags. I understand after they've been in the flood, they're contaminate, contaminated, so they have to dispose of them. Uh, but what are they going to do with them? Anyway, uh, we'll find out in weeks to come uh, here on Worldwide Magazine. I'm talking to this real nice young lady down here. She was telling me she's sandbagging. She lives right across the river to Pear over here. And what was your name? Rita Martinez. Okay, what do you do, Rita? Uh, I work at Washi Medical School um, in, a, in a lab there. I do research. Okay, what kind of research? Um, a lot of neuroanatomy, neurobiology. How long have you been sandbagging? Um, I've been here since about 7 o'clock. I guess you kind of kind of got first eye view of the flood when it first came by. The, yeah, you know. yeah, actually I did. I, you know, I didn't really know how bad it was because my roommate mentioned, you know, river to pair, you know, it's flooding over, and I was like, that cement thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it and, uh, you know, it was amazing. I was down here a couple of times last week, and it wasn't half as bad as it is now. But uh, so you really got to see it when it was really, you know, oh, yeah. coming over the top. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just unbelievable how fast this water goes. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho when the walls came a tumbling down. I know that Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho when the walls came a tumbling down. Good morning, Sister Mary. Good morning, Brother John. Well, I wanna stop and talk with you and tell you. You may have heard about Joshua when he was the 
the son of none And he never stopped his work And my chillin' up till his work was done I see that Joshua fit the battle of Jericho Jericho, Jericho Joshua fit the battle of Jericho When the walls came a-tumbling down May you've heard about the kings of Gideon May you've heard about the men of Saul But you're never gonna find a fighting man Like Joshua at Jericho Now to the walls of Jericho Lord, he walked with a sword in hand And the lamb ram horns began to blow When the trumpet was in my hand Begin a sound. Old Joshua shouted, Glory! And the walls came a tumbling down. Well, the Bible said, Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. And the walls came a tumbling down. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. And the walls came tumbling Thanks to all the hundreds of people that are nice enough to take the time to call us on the viewers hotline. Now I want to tell you something that Worldwide Magazine of course is seen around the world and we have different versions for different countries. And now we're going to give you a behind the scenes sneak look at one of our Japanese editions of Worldwide Magazine. セントルイスの市の中心部から南へ8キロほど下がったところにやってきました。え、こちらに流れているか、ミシシッピ川の支流のデペール川という川なんですが、え、ご覧のように、ただいま、え、堤防を一生懸命積み立てているんですね。え、
、えー、セントルイスの市の中心部から8キロほど南に下がってきました、えー、横に流れている川はミッシッピー川の支流のデペール川という川なんですが、えー、ご覧のように、えー、対岸は Well, we thought you'd like to see the international version of Worldwide Magazine. Yes, different cultures from around the world. And with different cultures, of course, you sometimes get a different slant on things. Magazine flood coverage, of course, done the worldwide magazine way. And I was just thinking of an expression on the way down here. We're at the、uh, Merrimack River, just outside of Arnold, I guess. And I remember the expression 50 million who just can't be wrong. Well, Pete. We are here where you say we are. I've never been here before, before the flood, but I'm excited about being here because we're here. With dump truck Dave Perry. This is a dream come true for me to finally, doing, finally meet you and, and finally stand doing, next to you. Wait, 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 wait.、Yeah. Oh, doing, what a day this is. This is he, the one and only dump truck Dave Perry. We're out here at the campus condos and enjoying life to the fullest, I'm telling you. This is fun. It's a big party out here. You're darn right it is. I'll tell you what, everybody's good. See these people back here? Well, you'll get a view of them in a little bit. Everybody out here is the most wonderful people because everybody stops to help, but we don't need no help here. We're having so much hey, fun. Hey, hey, Dave, Dave, all right. Fine. Tell our audience when you moved down here. Ah,、uh, think about the middle of February. When did the flood start? The middle of February, Pete. <laughs> That's right. Now remember, you called me up on the telephone and told me you were moving down here. What did I say to you then? This is the middle of February. The man mentioned,、uh, Dave, what about flood season? Well, I, it's come in and it's gone, you know. But and you said, ho, 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 it hasn't flooded here since 1978. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, wait a second. We're going to switch now. Before we do this, this is very exciting. But before we do this, we'd like to tell you that to help cheer up the morale of the flood victims, Worldwide Magazine's own Vanessa has been going around with her USO tour. She has, and she's been just fabulous. I think people are going to be really surprised when they see just what a show this girl can do. She's, she's so great. I was shocked. I, I was appalled.、Uh, let me tell you something about Vanessa. She has more talent in her little pinky than I do in my middle finger. I think you're right, Pete, and I think the same goes for me. More than in my middle finger. But she's a, she's a great performer and a, and a really great singer, and I can't wait to see it. So now, before we show、uh, the flood area with Dave, we're going to switch now to our mobile unit and to Vanessa's USL tour.
doing in there? What are you doing in there? I feel very, very sorry for you, Dave. I mean, for you and all these people here. I mean, you have no roof over your head, no bed, no air conditioning, no refrigerator, no place to keep your stuff. I mean, this is really miserable. The life you're leading is, is pretty grim. Yeah, well, see, Pete, that's just, that's just your views of this, see? You live in the city. You're used to all the pampering and stuff. A real survivor get out here and handle it, handle it all. It's got a lot of advantages out here, you know, if you think about it. First off, it comes to mind, you can't beat the rent. Boy, the rent's real cheap out here. I mean, it's like uh, nothing. <laughs> it doesn't cost you anything. Your, uh, your light bill, we have generators here to handle all electricity, televisions, radios. Not to mention just cars. People are stopping and donating anything so we don't have to pay for nothing. You know, they actually give us money to buy other stuff from other people. Ice, food, drinks, anything you want. It's, it's all here. The boys get together and play music. You can't beat it. You can't beat it. Just having a blast. You can't beat it. It's, it's summertime. The sun's out. Everybody's brought, it's just come so close together. It shows me that people are actually, they actually do care for each other. It's like one really big, really long float trip. Yeah, yeah, and it's lasted a couple of months so far, yeah. and I still ain't ready to go home. You know. <laughs> I want you to get an idea of what you got here. See, these are commodities. We serve between two and 400 people in this tent, from out of this tent. We got water passes for the old folks that won't get out of their places. Uh, we make bags and boxes up, we run them up to them. Over here we got dry goods, we've got fruits and chips, we've got taters. Over here we have toiletries and kitchen works, forks, cups, toilet paper, whatnots. Move over here, these coolers here are full of meats, hot dogs, and hamburgers. Where, all this, where does all this food come from? Donations. Red Cross and good-hearted people just passing by said they seen us. They come by, everything you see here has been donated. So, you're eating donated food, huh? Exactly. Just like normal, business as usual, huh, for you? You're dirt tootin'. What's about the basic feeling that made you come out and bring this out to these people here? Seeing how lucky I was, it's very hard on me to see people out of their homes. Yeah. So, if we find more, we'll bring more. Well, here we are on the Merrimack River, which is amazing how much water is in here. And we're with uh, Kathy and Mike Pepe Perez, and of course, dump truck Dave Perry, and uh, Dave's friend. I forgot your name, Lance. Okay. Now listen, Dave, why don't you and Lance uh, give us a tour of the river and tell us what we're seeing. Now, if you dangle your fingers in the water, a big old gar might come up and try to bite on you. There's some big fish in here, Pete. I wish we had something to show you. Sometimes you just get sick of water. You just want it to go down and be able to go home and sleep in your own bed, you know, that kind of stuff. But most of the time, it's, it's, you just keep a positive attitude, you know, and this is, this is the outcome. You have fun. Right now, we're like, we're like driving down Merrimack Bottom Road right now. The bridge, as you can see, is real low. I mean, you can almost touch it. It's just incredible. This is usually, the road is way below us, maybe 25 feet, 30 feet below us is where the actual road is. That's about how deep the water is here. Yeah, we're still driving down Merrimack Bottom Road. It's kind of different. It's just, you know, could, we're still driving down Merrimack Bottom Road. Yeah. I think this is really crazy. Look at how low this power line is. Unbelievable. Yeah, I, my heart just jumped when I saw it there in the in the power foreground. Off, isn't it? No. no. Power's not shut off? No, that's why we're in a fiberglass boat. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. When you look at it, it looks like the boat, the it looks like the cable has been lowered or it's tore down or something. That's the actual height that it's, it is all the time. You know, normally semis could drive underneath it. But that just shows you how low it is to the water. It's incredible. Because we're, we're up in the air. We're way up in the air. Pretty scary, Pete. What do you think? Oh, the weather started getting rough. The tiny ship was tough. It wasn't for the courage of the fearless crew. The, the middle would, would be lost. The middle would, would be lost. The ship, the ground of the shore. You know the lyrics to all the songs? Yeah. Oh, really? OK, well, I'm going to get again. The captain to the millionaire and his wife. Hey, look at this house. Stay, Mike. Oh, Mike. This is Lance's house now, Pete. This is where Lance used to live, right here, Pete. Now hey, you Dave. figure this is this is Lance's house now, uh, where he used to live. 
It, uh, believe it or not, it's a, it's a two, uh, about a two and a half story building. And we're running into the house. Somewhere. Yeah, we, we're running. That's a dock. I can hear that. That's, that's how fine. we stop. We just kind of crash into what? things around here. Bang. We're hit. Boom. Oh. Man, man, oh man. Right along the <laughs> desert house. Mother nature, you know. Keep a positive attitude. It's all you can do. We were diving off my roof the other day. Yeah? Well, this water isn't good to swim in, is it? I think the water's fine myself. They say the water's real bad. It's nice Lime, where the sewer plant right, is. Right, that's we're, the river to Paris. Yeah, we're up river water here. This is just nature. This is straight river. Yep. Lance, did you get your stuff out of the house before it flooded? Uh uh. You lost everything? All except for my, like, my. I got my pictures out and all my small stuff that I could carry out. Didn't you know the flood was coming? Well, this one came up fast. It was like I was taking it out while it was first. coming up. It, it, but I got most of it out. The furniture's all still there, my appliances, but other than that, everything's out. Pete, you gotta admit it's beautiful out here, you know? What? It's beautiful out here. This is our friend, old Wally and, uh, Wally and Billy's house over here. Look at this. See their addition? It's tilted. My goodness. Look at their porch. Yeah, their whole I porch is just tilted dream. up. wouldn't escape. Look at that. The porch is just floated. Away. <laughs> That's a two-story porch up there, and it just, uh, just floated right off the house. It's, it's amazing. There's another one of our neighbor's homes out here. Pete told you you're gonna cost me to get up. And... All right, Pete, stop it. Pete, give me that brick. Give me that paddle. Give me that paddle. That's it. That's it. Pete, knock it off. Knock it off. Knock it off. Knock it off. We're here to watch the flood. Be serious now. Don't relax that much. This is a serious business out here. You know, I ain't been crazy since I moved out here. Now, don't get me upset and crazy again, please. All right, look at these houses here. This is actually uh, my neighbor, Ricky. You'll notice his back porch is floating to the top of his windows, too. It's just incredible. Well, more his refrigerator he, actually, that window. he actually had a, it was very pretty inside his house. He had it fixed up nice, you know. Looks real good. It's all gone. The house next to it over here is actually where I used to live, OK? Oh, really? Yeah, that's the house I used to live in. And uh, we can't even get in there because uh, the water's up to tree level. We can't get through the tree limbs, but we can back here and look at it. That, yeah. My goodness, What's that's it. What's going on, Dave? Pardon me? What's Willow Beach. Willow Beach Road. And where is this in regards to Merrimack Bottom? Uh, Willow Beach Road is actually a private road. Um, Propane. Boom. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are you scared? Uh -huh. <laughs> at least you're honest, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, this is this. That takes usually uh, sitting on the ground. <laughs> sure we're home. Maybe we get up here and uh, we'll get a shot inside the house. And if you could imagine uh, water being this deep inside your house, it's kind of a little thrill. Wow. If you could even imagine it, to just look in the window here. What window? The window frame. <laughs> Step off in there and show them how deep it is, Dave. Now, if you can picture this being the inside of your house, you know. Let's get a little more, Dave. Thank you very much. Oh, most welcome. Right here, we have what's like the kitchen. You take that much stuff from the house. Yeah, sometimes you just got to get it and go, you know. This is like. Yeah, this is like kitchen looking in the living room or something, you know. It's just. You didn't bother to lock his door when he left? Why? <laughs> the door, that's the window. This window? Yeah, this yeah. is this is like kitchen window. <coughs> it used to be there. It's just pretty amazing. And actually, if we come up here, you could actually see the kitchen stove sitting in the water. But there's a window. I don't know how good you can see it. Yeah, it looks like it's just a little over the top of the kitchen stove. That's about how deep it would be if you could imagine it. Well, here it is. This is your house? This, this is our house, right. This is what I had to evacuate out of. Is this the second floor? This is the second floor. It's, uh, it's got like a 14, 16 foot ceiling on the first floor. And this is actually the second floor. 
So it's uh, pretty deep up through here now. It was pretty amazing. I come out one night to go in, Pete, and uh, he had to dive underwater to unlock the door. It's kind of amazing, you know. This third roof I've dived off of now. This is kind of spectacular, ladies and gentlemen. Here we have Lance approaching the top peak of the roof. He gets very ready. He's on there and he's ready to go. And woohoo! He's in the water, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. <laughs> we love roof diving. Hey, Pete, you want to try it? Let's get Pete to jump. That's incredible. It's hard to think that you talk about people spend all the money for swimming pools, and uh, boy, we just got a natural one right here, isn't it? Yeah, natural pool. Flood is pretty amazing, I'll tell you that. If you look at it right, it's a good time. It's just beautiful, you know? You, you just, if you just admire the beauty, keep a positive attitude, it's just, it's wonderful. It really is. Little boy's picnic table floating upside down over there. Yeah, basically, Pete, I love it out here, to tell you the truth. I got my Beagle Dog Cooter, and I got my uh, four-wheel drive pickup truck, and that's, that's all I need. I can hear the water roaring, pouring through the levee walls, and the rain is beating on me like a million waterfalls. Everywhere I look is water, 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 all around, and it's rising where I'm kneeling on this little patch of ground. I can see the billows rushing, brushing down the sugar cane. Ah, but I know the Lord is with me. I can hear him just as plain. Hey, and come ye to the water, come and wash your sins away. Can't you hear him calling to you? Come on, brothers. Let us pray. 
high water, high water, climbing over the wall. And high water, I order, now just why you call. Hey, you're singing and bringing music to my soul. Uprise me and baptize me, the whole Jordan roll. 